Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Bricks King Podcast, where I'm going to bend your ear about Lego. Review those amazing bricks of plastic, and discuss what is new and up and coming around the Lego world. I'm your minifig ghost, Matt. Let's build on it. Welcome in, everybody. How are we doing today? Today is Jurassic Day, day number one, and I say day number one because there's more coming with our bestest buddy, Jurassic buddy. Tom Jurassic, but that is not today. We're actually going to go through the sets, just you and I, right now, in your ears, for your enjoyment. So the Jurassic Wave for the JP30 anniversary, which is the 30th anniversary of the original Jurassic Park film, has five different sets in the wave. We're going to go through all five, and I'll give you my take on it, and you'll have to decide whether or not it's worth your pennies or not. First one up, we have the Velociraptor Escape. 76957 is the set number if you're Googling it. It has a $40 price tag and a $38 euro tag. has 137 pieces. That should make you freak out, right? Now, the reason it is so expensive it is the 4 Plus set. It is meant for a young child. And in that case, you know, you've got the big, fat, chunky... Giant pieces to help make this thing much easier to put together for a child that has maybe not as f- not as improved fine motor skills as you and I, or maybe not all of you. <laughs> anyway, so we have a few minifigs in here. We do have Ellie who comes with her pink shirt that's tied up in the front. She has two faces, nothing super special. She comes with her blonde hair here as it's waving in the uh, in the breeze. It's nice and wavy. And then she's wearing her shorts. The print of her legs does not look very good. Uh, it's, it's just not dark enough. It needs to be adjusted, especially on that um, darker tan colored sh- uh, shorts, pants, whatever, minifig legs that you want to call them. And then she has the radio that comes with her as well. Then we move on to Muldoon. Muldoon. I love Muldoon. He comes with his Grant hat. It is not his hat, unfortunately. That's a total miss. I wish they would have found a way to make that possible. He only comes with one face. He's kind of an angry, intense face that he's got going on. He's got mainly white is what we're dealing with with him. And then he's got his little vest He's got going on here. You got the little chest hair hanging out. And his legs, I mean, he's wearing shorts as well. His legs look a little bit better as far as the print goes because his legs are white. And he comes with a Trank Dart gun. One of the other little things that we get is we get a little ATV here. Very, very tiny. Not meant to be something super huge, but it's it's a nice little addition. Comes with a hot dog that you can put on the back of it. And then we have this little nest, if you will, that has a dinosaur egg with the greenish throat uh, showing through with the yellow eye. So nothing wild and crazy there. So then we get to the main build. The main build is actually made up of a few different sections and you can actually mix and match them to a certain degree. Um, Not anything like you can really, really do much, but so you have two levels here. The bottom level is where you can house your ATV with a hot dog. I don't know if that's the best thing, you know, considering that there are dinosaurs about, and we'll talk about one of them here in a little bit. But alas, let's move along. So you have your little section here where your your little ATV can sit. You also have these containment barriers, containment walls to keep any dinosaurs out. Or I guess you could, you know, hey, I'm going to keep them in. I don't really know how you would do that, but I guess it is something that could happen. You do have two little wall sections here, one of which can pop off super easy. It is meant to, I guess, you know, if the dinosaur is attacking, in this case, it is a velociraptor and we'll talk about it. Uh, But it is something that you could do and say, oh, yeah, you know, the raptor is getting in. Or I guess you could say he's getting out. It depends on how you want to how you want to play with it. But there are two sections here. They are joined by a clip. And that they can swivel um, forward and backward and out quite a ways, quite a ways, excuse me, 
there is a sign here. It is a print for the electricity to let you know, hey, this is wired up. We do have a green frog here and frogs are the theme because of the whole DNA thing. Then if we move to the second level, there's kind of this little control area. You could, you've got a little red container up here. You could, you know, pretend that you're putting, I don't know, whatever up here, <laughs> something, <laughs> however you want to do it. Uh, but anyway, you do have that little control area. Maybe you want to feed your raptors. There is a little bucket with a chain that has a little turkey leg in it that you can lower down and feed your animals. There's some animal doo-doo down in the bottom here. And there's also this little printed two-by-two two slope that has a picture of the raptor and some radar and stuff. Now, one of the things that I did for a get to mention, and I, I don't know why, but I totally definitely did forget to mention this. There is a gate. So where I was saying you could park your ATV, there is a lift gate that can go up and down. Uh, it does come the whole way out, so you can actually get your Raptor in and out of there. It's kind of meant to be that initial opening shot of Jurassic Park, but it's a total miss as far as the set goes to go along with that. Now your Raptor, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think these are new Raptors. Um, they definitely look new. They look much better than the Raptors that we've gotten in the past as far as uh, this feels much more film accurate. This definitely looks like the Raptors from the kitchen, uh, especially. And then it also kind of resembles very much so one of the stickers that we're going to talk about with the visitor center. So nice coloring. You've got the soft tail here, mouth that opens, the head that swivels 360 degrees all the way around in case he wants to get really wild and crazy. Not too bad, but expensive set, absolutely. And again, it's a four plus set. So, you know, you've got to keep that in mind. All right, next up, we have the Dilophosaurus Ambush. I've been waiting for this one. I think most of the Jurassic community has been waiting for something specific, uh, especially to this scene, because it is such an important scene in the film. 76958 is your set number if you're looking for it. The piece count is 211. The price is going to be 20 bucks here in the United States and 27 euros for the rest of you. So we do get a Nedry that is in here and I cannot recall because my other stuff is put well away for years now. But we have a Nedry here, and I cannot recall if he's the same print or not, but I do not believe so. He does come with his yellow jacket that he's got, his little rain jacket. He's got a little badge on here with the logo of Jurassic Park. He just has plainly colored legs, no printing or anything like that. His little slacks that he's wearing. Comes with his little fuzzy top hair, Dennis Nedry, or Newman, as some of us know him as. One face, he looks kind of scared, a little bit freaked out with his glasses on. The other one, he has been blasted in the face by the Dilophosaurus Venom. I really like that uh, that figure right there. Then we have the Dilophosaurus Dinosaur. If I recall, I, I don't, I, I'm not 100% certain on this, so we'll definitely have to get Tom to 100% clarify this. I am 99% sure this is a new mold. I'm fairly, very, fairly certain that this is a new mold. It is tinier than the Raptor. It feels like it should. We have the soft rubbery tail that is on the back. Mouth that opens and closes. Beautiful teeth in there. I think they really got them spot on. And the printing for the frills is really nice around the eyes. I think they did a much better job with this than they have done with Dilophosaurus in the past. So kudos to them. Big fan of the way that dinosaur looks. So we do have a little set piece here. We have the iconic East Dock sign here. Whoops, and it just totally popped off. It is only held on by one stud here, so you can take it off, move it around, however you want to do it. Anyway, so it has the, these are stickers, by the way. All three of these are stickers. You have your arrow that is pointing as a sticker. And like I said, it can be spun around or he's in the movie. He's spinning around. He's not sure which way it went and then just gives it one big final spin. There is a little sign here that says East Dock and another one that shows the boat and the island on that as well. This is a tiny little set piece. It's got a white frog that is here. You have some foliage pieces that are going on. And then you have your Barbasol can, which is a print and a printed lid to it. Then we get on to obviously what is considered to be one of the best vehicles <laughs> additions to the Jurassic World line. And this thing is about eight studs. No, it's about 10 studs wide. I apologize. The vehicle is actually eight studs wide. Can you believe that? And then you have the, the tires, which add another stud on each side. 
It's a very large vehicle, very bulky vehicle. You can really tell the weight with this thing after you build it. You get it in your hands, and it, um, it's, it's very, 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 very large. So the vehicle, we have the iconic red rims with the black tires. You have even a tire that is on the back as well. We have Jurassic Park license plates in the front and the rear that have the number 12 on it. Bunch of lights on the front and a few lights that are on the back. We have a printed 2x2 plate grill piece or tile, not a plate. I apologize. We have some dirt coloring throughout because this vehicle is mainly silver. And, but you do get this idea of that there's supposed to be dirt on it, dirt splashed here, dirt splashed there, because on one side it's black, on the other side it's that nougat color. So you get the idea with what's going on. I'm okay with it. At, initially, I didn't feel like it was probably the best thing. Honestly, I would prefer it not be the case because I don't really feel it. Like, it doesn't feel like there's dirt there. I I honestly would have preferred if they would have did what they did with the Ecto-1 in the most recent Ghostbuster film and just allow you to have the stickers. I didn't put the stickers on it. I wanted that clean look. I still have the stickers for them, but I didn't want to use that. I wanted to have that nice, clean look, so I chose not to put them on. I would have preferred that they did something like that with this it would have felt a little bit better that way I have the choice versus swapping out parts. Anyway, so the hood, you have a nice little uh, nice little built up hood here and it has the JP12 sticker on the front with some mud on it. There's a print on each side. It has Jurassic Park logo that is covered in a little bit of splotches of mud and then it has the number 12 on each side as well. Those stickers are both different by the way. As we get towards the cockpit area, We have a spot for your minifig. Now, technically, it could hold two minifigs, but you're not going to get them in there comfortably. You are going to have to maneuver arms and um, do that whole kind of thing. But I don't know that you're necessarily looking to do that. We have a nice little windscreen here, which has a nice little bar that is covering it uh, the whole way around here with a light bar that is above that. Really nice usage of parts there. Nothing wild and crazy. Just a nice way to get it done. Now, as we move towards the rear, we have a big giant cargo area in the back, which is absolutely bizarre. I can only imagine what you decide to do with it, whatever. It's got that sand green color that is in there, so that is always a plus. The rear wheel on the uh, on the back end of the vehicle does come off. It is held on by a Technic pin. But overall, it is pretty nice. You do have a lot of room on the inside, like I said. The removable top is always a plus, and it comes off real easy. It's only attached by four studs, and they are mainly in the back. So it's a really cool set. I'm a big fan of this set. I thought it was really nice to get another Jeep, especially, you know, different size, different dimensions, different idea. This is, I think this is supposed to be a soft top Jeep, if I'm not mistaken, um, and that would explain the color in the uh, on, on the roof and stuff. Nice Jeep. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. It's just a vehicle, but it is a nicely done vehicle. So you definitely have to take that into consideration. Is it worth the money? I think this is a steal for 20 bucks. Some of you are going to say, yeah, but you get a lot in 20 bucks here. I'm pretty sure, like I said, this is an exclusive new dinosaur sizing mold. I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I apologize, but it's an iconic part of the film and I think they nailed it. And I think for 20 bucks, it is probably, it is probably going to be your best value out of, out of the entire wave. I would, I would venture to say. Next up, we have the Triceratops Research Set 76959. It has 281 pieces. It retails for an easy 50 bucks and 53 euros. Okay. Okay, okay. We have an Ellie minifig here. She comes with the tied shirt in the front yet again. But in this case, her print is a little bit different because it has some dirt on it. So she's dirty here. She's not dirty in that one. But she has her updo that she's going on here. I'm a big fan of this hairpiece. And I love ponytails, so I'm all in on it. She has a scared face. She has a sass face that is going on. And she has her poorly printed legs. Then we have Ian Malcolm. Ian Malcolm has that very dark tan that he's got going on, an iconic hair that he has in the film, which is okay. Someone brought a scientist. He is the rock star that was brought. (laughs) Anyway, he comes with a little shovel because there's a giant 
pile of poo that we have to talk about. He has two different faces here. He has one where he's happy and then he has one where it's almost like, are you sure about that? Where his eyebrows are furrowed. At least one of them is he's in all black. Printing is okay. His chest hair looks a little bit weird. It looks more like a shirt that is underneath. So we have to talk about the set piece that comes with this vehicle. It is just a bunch of brown bricks and a brown frog with some foliage, and it is where the berries are that are on the inside. They are hidden. The top comes off. You get inside. It's supposed to be the big giant pile of poo. It comes on a, uh, a a few plates that hold it on the bottom. Nothing wild and crazy and special, but it is meant to be what it is. <laughs> and I'm sure Tom and I will discuss more <laughs> as we move along. Now we get to the main focal point. Well, I guess, isn't isn't the poo the main focal point? I mean, the dinosaur as well. Anyway, we'll get to the dinosaur too. The vehicle, really nicely done. Not as wide as the others. I know it's like six and a half studs wide, seven with the wheel wells sticking out. Kind of disappointing to a certain degree, but I get it. I think if they would have made it too wide, it wouldn't have scaled very well. If I'm not mistaken, the Jeeps were smaller in comparison to a Ford Explorer at that time, and the Ford Explorers then were a little bit more narrow-bodied than what they are these days. So you have that nice color scheme with the yellow around the bottom. You have that lime green and then that dark red color, darkish brown, red, reddish brown. (laughs) Dark reddish brown, I think. I'm, I'm having a moment. Anyway, so you have that beautiful color scheme. I I adore that. You have the Jurassic Park logos that are on the side. Those are all on stickers, of course. Everything in here is a sticker. Then as we look at kind of the main focal point of this thing, in the front of this, they have those specific, if you remember in the film, they said, hey, uh, no, they run on the track in the middle of the roadway. And they had those kind of um, glassy optics optical sensors that were there. They have those here in the front. Um, The bull bars kind of idea that is going on here. I like that. That is nice. Got some lights on there. Um, We have a little searchlight that is on the passenger side in the front. And then, oh, I, I lie. We do have some printed things. We have the hubcaps that are printed here for the tires. But moving along, Let's get to the interior. The interior, we have actually room to fit for minifigs. It's a little bit wider than what the Jeep is, so that does work. It's more like six studs wide, depending on how you want to look at that. Um, You only get one stud in your butt, so or on your butt. You sit your butt on the one stud. I don't know. That doesn't sound right at all. Anyway, so you have your steering wheel in here. You have your CD-ROM that is going on here just uh, in front of the passenger seat. Nothing else in the back. Kind of uh, disappointing to a certain degree. You would expect maybe some other iconic things, but you know it wasn't necessarily the point where we had the, uh, the night vision goggles or anything like that. The roof does come off. The roof piece is something we have seen kind of before with the giant open slit that is basically just a bunch of plates that are fused together in a giant opening in the center of that. We have a giant windscreen piece that goes across the top and then what are supposed to be some lights. I like the vehicle for what it is. It's true to form. Um, It looks a little bit weird compared to the others because it does... You, it is a noticeable difference as far as width, but it does sit higher in that case in the film. Those, the Ford Explorers did sit higher than the Jeep. So if you're going to say, well, you know, we do have this to offer you, I would I would take it and run and say, yeah, they absolutely nailed it in that regard. So we have to talk about the dyno that comes here with this set, big Triceratops that we have going on. And... um Nice coloring. I'm not a, I I don't hate it. Mouth is okay. It's your kind of standard Triceratops. I like the horned crown that he has going on here. Really, really nice. I think the printing is okay. The head moves up and down, moves down really well to get him in a feeding pose. Rotates 360 degrees if you want to get wacky with it. Um, You can't really get them into a big time running pose uh, just because the legs are you know, meant to not move in that way. <laughs> they only have the one joint where you can rotate them forward and backward. Uh, you can't get them out and the knees and everything are locked. So um, I, I guess if you worked with it, you could probably do it, but 
you know, I don't really see a need to necessarily do that. So I like the set. Um, the question becomes, is it worth $50? You know, if you look at the uh, price per piece or price per part, however you want to look at that, whatever you want to call it, 18 cents is expensive, but you're getting a big chunky dinosaur. Not cheap at all. Uh, not a whole lot of other big chunky elements that come with the build. Um, the actual build of the Explorer is pretty straightforward. Um, I do like though in this entire wave with what they've done with the vehicles is just so that you do not get confused. And I'm not a not positive what the age range is on these. It might be eight or nine or 10, but it's to help somebody not get confused, right? They have certain colors lower in the build so that you know, oh, it's facing this way or it's facing that way. So you don't put something that goes on the front on the back and have to tear it apart and start over from scratch. All right, before we move on any further, we have to take a break. We'll be back in a moment. So now we have to move on to what is probably something that the Jurassic community, the Lego Jurassic community has been begging for since I would say probably day one. We're talking about the Brachiosaurus Discovery. 76960 has 512 pieces, $80. Ooh, that's a steep one. And 85 euros, that's even more. But big plastic, big dinosaur, big tree pieces. We'll talk about those here in a little bit. So let's go ahead. What do we have to offer with this thing? Well, we have another Jeep. This is a differently numbered Jeep. It is JP18. It is a similar build, although it is not identical. We don't have a dirty Jeep here. We have a nicely colored Jeep, simple red rims again with the black tires. You have the extra tire on the back as well. Um, your minifigs that come with the Jeep, though, we do have Ellie again with her updo. And she's got astonished face and then she's got smiley face. She comes with some plants that she is, you know, she well, she's not feeding the Brachiosaurus, but Grant is. And at least you have that option. And we'll talk about Grant here in a minute. But we have to get to Hammond. John Hammond. I'm delighted to finally meet you in person, Dr. Grant. I probably butchered that, but whatever. He comes with his amber cane here. He comes with a big hat. Hat is okay. It's not horrible. I guess it could be worse. He only has one printed face. I think they did a pretty good job getting the white on the, his fleshy toned face. Bunch of pockets that is in his jacket, but uh, overall, okay. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Then we move on to Alan Grant. Grant looks entirely too young in this minifig face. I don't like it. Um, I, I, he's got a little bit of, you know, smile lines going on and, and a little bit of crow's feet, but I don't recall that he really did in the, in the film, but it just seems like there's something missing to make him feel older. I don't know that if it's, it is eyebrows are too bushy or what, there's something missing anyway. So he has that, uh, kind of darker colored sand pants that he's got going on that, um, khaki color that we have. He's got his blue shirt here with his red scarf and he comes with a claw which is supposed to be the raptor claw so what i was talking about the plant that ellie had the plant was essentially what grant and the kids are feeding you know the um tri uh, triceratops the <laughs> brachiosaurus anyway let's get back to the jeep so the jeep uses that same printed grill piece here in the front, has an idea of a winch, although it is not a winch, it does not work, has a license plate in the front, but not in the rear. Again, JP18 that it has right here, well, it has 18, it has the JP logo. Has the JP18 print, or sticker, I'm sorry, stickers. Everything is stickers other than that grill print, I promise. Anyway, so we have the JP18 sticker that is down the center and the Jurassic Park stickers that run down the side as well. The thing that you need to make sure is that you put these in the correct spot. The reason I say that is if you don't put them in the right spot, you don't follow along to the instructions, it's going to look a little bit weird. So yeah, just fair warning there. I didn't run into an issue. I'm just saying make sure you do. Anyway, if you want it to be specific and down to every little detail. We have a similar style windshield here, except we don't have a light bar that is in the front. It has the exact same kind of uh, roll, roll cage that is going on right there in the front. You have a roll cage around the sides and back around the back. It does actually work on click joints, so you can lift that entire thing up. 
put your minifigs in and put it down. The cool thing about this is that you actually have three seats. You have two in the front and you have one in the rear that is slightly elevated. So you can get all your minifigs in there, as many as you so choose, do your photography, your posing, however you want to do that. It's just a steering wheel and a gear shift that is on the inside. Pretty nice little Jeep build. It scales very well, obviously, to the other one. It is the same exact size, same exact dimensions, but we do not just get a repeat, right? It is, it is nice to be able to get something just a little bit different. So then we move on to the big tree build here. Everybody has been clamoring about this. I did most definitely when we did the preview show with Tom before. Really nice tree build. A lot of foliage elements that are in here, although it does kind of look a little bit scraggly. Feels like it's missing more foliage. You could definitely doctor this thing up and make it much better with more foliage pieces, guaranteed. Feels a little bit too much technic framey, like the inside of the tree, um, you know, the branches and stuff. I feel like there should be more. Um, but it, it's it's not a bad build at all. It's a, it's a nice little solid build for a, a tree. You have a little standing platform here that is a plate where I guess it's supposed to be where the kids and he were, where they were feeding or whatnot. You could maybe even consider it as a built-in observation deck. It is completely up to you. There is an egg fragment that is down here on the bottom, and that is supposed to be, you know, where they come across the eggs and stuff like that you know, where they found out, oh, the frogs are breeding or or the dinosaurs are breeding, not the frogs. I'm looking at the pink frog and I meant, <laughs> that's what I meant. So we have a, well, it's technically not a pink frog. It's a coral frog for all of you that are going to get mad at me. Oops. And I lost one of my plant pieces. I'm tripping over my words. I'm going a little bit quick today. Anyway, so we have that. We also have this little build piece here that is supposed to let you know this is the Brachiosaurus sanctuary, whatever, you know, no feeding, flash, yelling. You don't want to startle the dinosaurs, of course, that would be bad. So you do have that. Those are both stickers, of course, as I had mentioned, because it seems like everything is stickers these days, which is fine. This is okay. It's not a big deal. So not bad. Needs some more foliage, but not horrible. I, I can't complain too much. Then we move on to... The thing that everybody has wanted, a big giant hunk of plastic. That is all it is. But the JP dinosaur enthusiasts that are out there, Lego fan enthusiasts, they are going to be able to want this and they have wanted it for a long time. So the legs do not move on this. The tail can, you can hear that clicking around. The tail can go uh, swivel around. It's soft tipped on the end. The neck can go up and down. The joint is not near as loud. Um, it can go up quite a ways and actually reach the top tier of the trees here, or it can go down and you can actually get it into a pose where it actually does reach the stand that I was talking about, the little outcropping that you're standing on right there to feed the dinosaur with the leaf. So I think that is kind of neat. The mouth does open. The, the teeth seem very accurate yet again, just like the Dilophosaurus, it felt right. Uh, the head can swivel around 360 degrees as well. I think the printing on this looks really nice. The eye, I think they captured a pretty good uh, a pretty good way of doing it. And there's actually six studs that are on the very back of this. Not on the very back of it. On the back of it, just below the neck. So, you know, if you wanted to, you could strap a saddle on that baby and let it roll or something. I mean, I guess you could. I don't know why you would. Just for fun, I guess. So... Nice dinosaur. The community has been clamoring for. I'm glad they finally got it. Now you can stop hounding Lego and they don't have to continue to answer emails. When are we going to get a dinosaur? Or see social media posts. This is not fair. Why can't we get a dinosaur? I'm, I'm just kidding around, guys. Relax. Take a deep breath. Woosa. Right? All right. We're moving on to the last set. The Visitor Center. The T-Rex and Raptor Attack 76961. This thing has seven, uh, 693 pieces. I just wanted to say 700. Retails for $130 and 130 euros. I know. Steep. Again, big chunky plastic. Big chunky plastic. So let's go ahead and talk about the minifigs first. We'll get to the build, which is actually smaller than I was expecting but let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so minifigs. We get a plethora of minifigs the most out of the entire wave here in this set, which of course you expect. You get Henry Wu before he became a bad guy here. He's got a smiley face and he's got one of 
you know, that kind of perplexed face in that part of the film where you're saying a herd completely composed of females will breed. Um, he, you know, had some confusion there and that's when, you know, Malcolm said life will find a way. Um, he's wearing his lab suit here. So pretty much white with some printing, not anything wild and crazy. Ray Arnold, he comes in this, uh, nice little, nice little whole deal that he's got going on. He's got the chest hair hanging out. He has his uh, tie that is untied. He has a face where he's kind of confused. And then he's got one where there definitely appears to be some fear. Uh, I'd love the print of his tie hanging open. Then we have Grant again. Again, the face, I don't know. He just feels too young. It, it feels too kiddish. And I'm, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but he, he definitely feels very much uh, kiddish. He is wearing his shirt that is dirty at this point in time. And you'll find out, you know, there's a, another one that's a little bit dirty here. And that is Ellie. Ellie has her hair that is down and she has her shirt, not her little pink jacket thing that she has, but her shirt that is open, not open. <laughs> I was, I was mad. She's not wearing the jacket that is open, the shirt that is open. Her blue shirt, it does not open. That would be bad for this rated film. <laughs> anyway, um, so she has dirt that is on her shirt as well. She has a scared face and a and a sass face that is going on. Um, and then she has those horribly printed legs uh, for the color there. Ugh. Then we move on to Lex. Here's what I wish would have been different. I wish Lex would have gotten legs that were just a little bit bigger um, because she feels too childish in comparison to her brother. She's got her little uh, braided ponytail. I guess I guess it's not a ponytail. Braided hair that she's got going on, going down her back. Her uh, print of her shirt that she is wearing is actually pretty nice. I like the way that is done. She has a concerned face and a smiley face, and she has some sand blue pants. Let me move on to Tim. Tim actually has his little kind of alfalfa calic that is sticking up here, which is actually kind of neat. Anyway, enough um, about the hairpiece. He has two faces. He's got a smiley and a confused face as well. He's got the short legs that he's got going on here and his jacket, which is open to show his shirt print underneath. Then we have a few other things here. We have two animals that we've got going on here. We have a, another raptor. Same kind of idea that is going on here as we talked about with the other one. We also introduced a new dinosaur just in this wave, not overall. But we have a T-Rex here. The printing is uh, pretty good. It's not a green T-Rex, so I'm okay. Um, tall, uh, tall. The tongue area looks kind of weird, but the, the teeth look pretty good. Printing, I really like the deep eye socket that they have, the printing that goes around there. It seems to really look well on this one. Legs move, tiny arms move. Tiny arms don't match the body, unfortunately. Um, in, in color, they look kind of weird. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Tail spins 360 degrees and is a soft tip tail. Then one of the newer things that we get here is, again, this is supposed to be the visitor center. We have our T-Rex that they have in the lobby that is in there, and it is completely brick built. But again, you know, we're talking about light bluish gray and dark bluish gray ball joints and stuff like that and blue Technic pins that are sticking out like sore thumbs. Definitely not the biggest fan of that, but I do like the build of this. I do like the way it kind of squats and it sits or stands, however you want to look at that. But we definitely need some new color palettes um, for certain parts. We just, we need them in the worst way. The head cannot rotate. It just goes up and down and the jaw can open and close. But again, you see that ugly blue Technic pin hanging out. Definitely not a fan of that. So on to the visitor center, the main focal point of this entire build or this entire set, I should say, because this is really the only build other than T-Rex that we just talked about. However, very small in what I expected, and I guess I, I, I shouldn't complain too much. It's already a $130 set. Some of you are going to be losing your minds already. A lot of big plastic between the two dinosaurs, and then we have these big giant sauce half quarter saucer pieces that are up here in that uh, nougaty color to, you know, fit the, the idea, the, the theme and really get as good as you're going to get for the price to capture that, um, the iconic roof of the visitor center. So we have 
an open set to build, a very, very open set build. And I don't really have a, a horrible problem with it. I just wish they would have made it an ability to close it up. So you have the iconic fossils that are around the double doors. Double doors open straight up. They look pretty good. Um, the fossils are of a T-Rex, I believe. And it's just um, stickers the whole way around that door frame. But the assembly here is actually really nicely done. I'm a pretty big fan of the way that looks. Then we have these windows that go down the side on each side that kind of... The, the building actually kind of juts out, a kind of weird looking to a certain degree. That's why I said I wish it would have swept back in towards the rest of the build. I'm sure there's a way it could be done and could have been done. I don't know if it would have been an integrity issue or whatever. However, it could have been done. So we have a bunch of plant pieces, different colored flowers that are just underneath the underneath the windows, which is which is fine. Then we move to the inside of this thing or the back side of this thing, however you want to look at it. So looking at it from the rear, if we start on the left side, we have our computer screen that is up here where with our, um, our little amber block that is being examined. Um, we have uh, something that is being examined under a microscope. Our computer screen, by the way, is a, um, a sticker. And then we have a printed keyboard that is here. Um, a cute little area. I do like it. It's supposed to be, you know, the, I was going to say workshop. It is meant to be the laboratory. You have a sticker here of Mr. DNA. When I was a kid, because of how, how he said it, I always thought it was Mr. DNA because I had no idea what DNA was when I was a kid. Anyway, so Mr. DNA sounds like an auto parts store. DNA auto. So then we have the little egg area here, the little receptacle that holds the eggs, that, and then we have the robotic arm that turns them. Simple build, only a few parts, but it looks really, really good. Um, the incubator top actually can come down and actually close up on this if you move the arm out of the way, which is kind of neat, so you can get a few different play ideas here. There is a sticker that is here on a clear window piece. And it is a, I guess, translucent color that is going on here. And it is a parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus. I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to get told I said that wrong <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> so then we move to the entryway into the center here. You can see that sticker from the opposite direction, which is nice. And then you can also see the raptor one that is on the adjacent side that looks just like the raptors we got. There are some plants that are in the in the little foyer here when you walk in from the double doors. You also get to see a giant technic structure up in the roof for the rafters. Not a big fan of that. I wish that could have been done a little bit different. And then you also have, going from one side to the other, you have this softer plastic piece. It says, when dinosaurs ruled the earth. I thought that was going to be cloth. But I'm okay that it's not. It'll probably actually stand the test of time much better than it is plastic. And it is held on there by two Technic pins and a little ball on the end. So let's rotate around to the other side here, the other little viewing area that we have. And it's another iconic part of the film in the visitor center. We have the buffet of food here. You have a nice little cake build that has a pink frog on top. You have some ice cream that is over here. You've got the little flames that are going of the candles. Some more plant pieces that we have here. You have the table with the jello. Um, and then some other sweets that we have here. Obviously, big part of the film here. You also have a fan that spins around here. A nice little decoration just to have, just a little bit extra. And then we also have a little red, what looks like red roses plant that is sitting here, which for the love of me, every time I move this thing gets knocked off. I'm not the biggest fan of that, but beggars can't be choosers, right? So there is a little Technic arm that sticks out. We're still looking at this from the rear. From the top roof of the, the visitor center, the big main roof here. And when you press this thing, what it does is it launches out the pin that is holding one side of the banner and it falls down to the ground. So you get that, that look of that iconic, uh, end of the, the film where the banner falls. Is it in front of the T-Rex across the T-Rex? I can't, I can't specifically remember these days anyway. So that is your visitor center. Looks really good. Looks really good. I'm a big fan of the way that it looks. Just wish it was bigger 
and you know, I wish the sides would have swept back on it. I wish it wouldn't have looked so open up top, but again, $130 people are already going to complain. So <laughs> I guess, you know, I guess there's no reason to really complain about that kind of stuff to a certain degree, but I understand why people would, I understand why people do. So I get that. So as a whole, I think the wave turned out really well. I think it, I mean, it, it, it scratched the itch that we have had for JP 30 stuff for the longest time. So in that regard, I would have to say, you know, you can't really complain. You really have to be like, dude, yes, I'm on board. 100%. I appreciate this. This was phenomenal. And I would agree with you as a whole, get some nice dinosaurs, get some good minifigs, get some new vehicles. I'm, I'm good with that. It does have its flaws, some of that being the price point, but again, big chunky plastic costs money. So I like them. You just have to consider what you decide to purchase. Maybe you were day one. Um, I It took me some time to get to these. I have to thank Lego for sending them early, <laughs> even though it's taken some time to get to them just because of all of the other stuff that we did as you've been keeping track of. So to wrap up, Brick Road Chicago is coming fast and furious. We are literally, what, 10 days out? June 17th and 18th at the Schaumburg Convention Center, Brick Road Chicago is taking place. The public can get in there on the 17th and 18th. If you want to go, you can purchase your tickets ahead of time online. You can follow the link in the description down below of this show. You can pass it on to somebody else. You can probably Google, you know, uh, Brick Road Chicago tickets and it'll pop up through that website. You can use the code BRICKSKING, that is B-R-I-C-K-S-K-I-N-G. It is, uh, like I said, I'm 99% sure it's supposed to be capitalized, so make sure you try it capitalized to begin with. Save yourself $4 on an entry-level ticket, entry-level, single-day admission ticket. Obviously, if you're younger, I, I can't remember what the age cutoff is. I want to say under the age of eight. They get in free, maybe? But if you are a first responder, I think military, police, you get your, your ticket is already cheaper, but I, I know the code still works with it. So go ahead, use the code, save yourself some money. If you are going to be there, come say hi. I will have my table, my big table drape that is out there. And yeah, uh, we, we're going to be hanging out. If I'm in the middle of an interview, just say hi. Not, not anything that, uh, you know, can't be, uh, can't be overdone. So I hope to see some of you there as I saw a number of you last year. And um, so until Chicago, because it's coming fast, we've still got episodes, we've still got content until then, it, things are moving. And I will say, I am hoping, I am hoping that I can get a little bit more than eight or 10 interviews this year. I'm hoping to get more like 12 to 14. It just comes down to timing. People are gone for lunch. People are talking to other people. People can't leave because they don't want to leave their stuff unattended or they want to, they're talking to people, you know, getting John Hammond last year. Let's see if he can bring his visitor center back and have something different this year. But we'll definitely, we'll definitely see what happens. So until we meet again, I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's build on it.